Hi, my name is Kat. I'm a landscape architect and today I'm going to show you how to rethink your lawn the bay-friendly way. Now here's what a conventional lawn looks like. Ornamental and underused. But now lots of folks are transforming those lawns into bay-friendly gardens. These diverse and beautiful gardens will help you use less water, are easier to maintain, require less chemical fertilizers and pesticides, save energy, and produce fewer greenhouse gases. In addition, they also build healthy soil and plants. Replacing your lawn is a great opportunity to create a bay-friendly garden. You can create a habitat for bees and butterflies, start your own vegetable garden or orchard, create an urban retreat, or a perfect space for you, your children, and your pets. The possibilities are endless, and once you develop a plan, the rest is pretty easy. Now I'm going to show you how to sheet mulch. Sheet mulching is a cheap and easy way to replace your lawn. If you don't want to do your entire lawn, you can start with just mulching a part of your yard a little bit at a time. It doesn't require the use of heavy equipment or pesticides. And once you have the materials, sheet mulching can be completed in a day, depending on the size of the area you are covering. So let me explain how sheet mulching works. Sheet mulching is a technique of laying cardboard or newspaper over an existing lawn and then topping it off with wood mulch. The layers break down naturally to feed the soil with microbes, creating a vibrant ecosystem which is going to give you healthier soil and plants. But sheet mulching is also an ideal way to suppress weeds, build your soil health, and replace lawns. The best time to sheet mulch is in the fall to take advantage of the rains, but it can be done any time of the year. There are many different ways to sheet mulch, but I'm going to show you a simple way recommended by the Bay Friendly Program. First, you're going to prepare the site. If you have tall weeds, you are going to want to knock them down or mow existing vegetation so that it lies flat. Then, remove only woody or bulky plant materials. If you plan to retrofit your sprinkler heads for drip irrigation, be sure to flag the sprinkler heads now so that you can find them again when you're done. I'll show you all about sprinkler head retrofitting in part two. Now, some plants are going to need to be removed before sheet mulching, such as invasive plants that spread by rhizomes, bulbs, or that re-sprout from extensive root systems. Some examples include blackberries, oxalis, horsetails, kikuyu, and Bermuda grass. When removing these invasive plants from around plants that you will be keeping, be careful that you don't damage the roots of the plants that you are keeping. Next, we're going to soak the area with water to start the natural process of decomposition. To avoid runoff and keep mulch from spilling over onto sidewalks or driveways, you can use a flat edge shovel to cut the lawn away 8 to 12 inches from the edge of the concrete. The soil should be at least 3 inches below the grade, in other words, 3 inches below the top of the concrete. Your excess soil and sod can be mounted away from the edges and sheet mulched in place. If you're sheet mulching a lawn, just flip the edges over so the roots and the soil are face up. If you encounter the plastic netting that came with your sod, don't worry about it. Throw away the pieces that you see. Your leftover soil and any extra plant material or prunings can be used to create mounds for plants that like well-drained soils. Many native plants thrive on these mounds. Mounds also create more visual interest in the garden by adding height and depth. All right, once the area is prepped, then you're ready to install five gallon or larger plants. Next, you'll add a weed barrier. It is essential that this barrier be permeable to water and air. Recycled cardboard boxes work great. You can get big sheets of cardboard from appliance stores or bike shops. You can also buy recycled cardboard rolls or use multiple layers of newspaper or burlap. Be sure you don't use plastic or weed cloth, which won't biodegrade. Remember, this is all about building your soil naturally. When you're placing your cardboard pieces down, be sure to overlap the pieces by 6 to 8 inches so the sun won't get through them. You want to starve your weeds of light. As you're working, you can rip and fold the cardboard to accommodate the space around your plants. Now completely cover the ground except where there are established plants that you don't want to cover. Cover all green lawn to keep the sunlight from hitting it. Remember, any lawn showing at the end of the project will come right back. Next, we're going to wet down the cardboard to keep it in place to make it easier to shape around obstacles. When you're done covering the existing lawn with cardboard, it's time to add a layer of compost and mulch on top. 
Spread your compost directly over the cardboard and then cover it with bulky materials like wood chips to optimize weed control. Adding compost will help build soil. However, if your main goal is weed suppression, you can just add the mulch and skip the compost. In total, the compost mulch layer should be about 2 to 5 inches deep. The top layer of mulch mimics the newly fallen organic matter of a forest. Good materials for this layer include chip plant debris, tree prunings, leaves, or even straw. You are going to need a lot of mulch. Typically, a smallish front yard can take 18 cubic yards of mulch. To find local sources for mulch, please see the resources accompanying this presentation. Now that you've laid down the cardboard and covered it with mulch, you're going to punch holes in the cardboard and place your plants in the soil under the sheet mulch. In cooler climates, smaller plants like 4-inch pots can be planted right into the mulch compost layer on top of the cardboard without digging a hole. Don't worry, the roots will break through the cardboard. You will want to add compost just around the root ball if you didn't already add compost on top of the cardboard. If you did, you're good to go. Remember, your new plants will require water and attention when they're young, even if they're drought tolerant. Just a couple other things to keep in mind. Don't pile materials up against tree trunks or stems of plants. This will help them stay healthy and disease free. Especially during the dry season, small seedlings may need protection from snails and slugs that like to hide under the mulch. You can protect young trees from rodents with physical guards like metal bands that wrap around the base. So, congratulations! Your lawn has now been sheet mulched and you've laid the foundation for a beautiful bay-friendly garden that you will enjoy for years to come. Thanks for watching this bay-friendly presentation. For a detailed description and case study of lawn removal with sheet mulch, be sure to check out the Bay-Friendly Gardening Guide, a free download on our website, or you can order a hard copy of the book online at bayfriendly.org. For more information on sheet mulching rebates and where to find local materials, please see the resources that accompany this presentation.